as no any juice or sweets yeah. to offer. Yeah. So um, it was less of our priorities. So when do you break your virginity? If, if anything. Ah, I don't think uh, I can remember. You don't remember? <laughs> ah, everyone remembers their first time. Yeah? Was it teens, 20s? <laughs> yeah, we're very uh, active when we were teens. <laughs> You've always been an activist. Yeah, very active. <laughs> <laughs> so, because. <laughs> 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 Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to a special, and I mean, I don't even think it's a special soul, it's an iconic interview, yeah, this one. Iconic is the uh, I've been trying to get this man for years, he's finally here, please welcome CIC, Julius Maleba. <laughs> Thank you. Good and good how are you, kid? Good and you, good and you. Are you good? Fresh from, from, from Ibiza, how was Absolutely. Ibiza? Eh? It was sunny, yeah. very nice. Yeah? Yeah, cool. What was the reason for you going down there, like? Mazotti's daughter was getting married. So oh! Yes. So I went to support him. Yeah. yeah. I was speaking to Lukao because he was with you. Yes. It's like, hey, chief, yeah. it's expensive, yeah. As yeah, long yeah, as yeah, when yeah, you come, yeah. he must come with Julius because he pays for everything. Ah, never. <laughs> <laughs> I think the man who had money was Lukao there. We there, didn't have money. There. What were you guys getting up to? Like, it looked, looked well, dope uh, on it was the so chilled. I went with my wife. Mm. Well, we wake up, breakfast, then we just chill. There's yeah. nothing to do. Yeah. And then uh, on the day of formal programs, we'll uh, go and attend. And the problem is that the sun set very late, around half past nine, ten. Wow. Yeah, so you stay until that late before you can make it, uh, like, agree it's now evening. Because yeah. there's darkness. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but by 12, you are tired. Yeah. And the young ones will go to clubs and yeah. Tina will go sleep. <laughs> yeah. I saw there was a video of you DJing at some party there. No, it was the pool party of uh, the official uh, wedding program. Yeah. Yeah, so I went to the, I was there, attended, and then we started fooling around. Yeah. yeah. And how, how is the uh, clubbing culture there? Because black coffee is massive. I didn't go to any club uh, activity. I went to some place. I can't remember whether it's a beach party or what, but it starts at 8 and finishes at 12. Mm. From there, you jump to the next venue. The club sure. opens sure. at 12. And I missed uh, uh, Euphonic set the other day. I missed uh, Zex Bandrini set because he will start playing at 3 mm. or 4, mm. and then it's a two-hour set. Sure. So it finishes at six in the morning. Yo, yo, yo. Yeah, yo, yo. so I can't keep up. Hey, man. I wanted to go and support, but I can't. Yeah, I'm done, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, you must take two days off. Yeah. You lose two days. How long yeah. does it take you to recover now? Because me, it takes me about seven days if I had a rough, rough. Uh, I two days. Two if, days. If, if, oh, but yeah, rough, rough. Rough, rough means going beyond 12. <laughs> <laughs> So if I sleep before 12, I'm fine. Yeah. yeah. Take me back from the beginning, man. Yeah. Uh, how was it being raised to go Sisheko, Zone 1? Well, it was an ordinary life of every uh, ordinary black person who grew up during our time. We, we were, I was born to uh, a third born. My grandmother had nine kids. Whoa. Yeah, and they stayed in a four-roomed house, two-bedroom. And then we slept everywhere. Mm. Uh, depending on who came first to get a proper spot. Yeah. Yeah. So we slept in the kitchen, in the dining room, and in the bedrooms. And, and, and it was normal. Uh, and it was vibey, it was proper. Yeah. It was nice, yeah. too loud. Uh, there's no a day where you'll say you are bored because you are in a permanent company. Yeah. yeah and there's something happening. But with us, it was worse because there was no TV, there was no radio. Yeah. So we had to go and watch TV from other people's houses. Yeah. And then when you come back, you are dirty, you must go to the tap. Yeah. Uh, and then clean up yourself. You see that thing of bathing at the tap? Yeah. You just put a leg and then you bath and you think you bath properly. Yeah. 
can t- the water didn't touch the bag. <laughs> <laughs> You miss the spot. Yeah, I miss the spot. When you go back, they're like, hey, go back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, that type of an arrangement. But it was chilled. We didn't know much, and therefore we didn't ask for much. Yeah. We thought this is how it's supposed to be. When you say where, are you talking about your siblings or? Yeah, my um, I don't have siblings. I'm the only child. Oh, okay. Uh, so my cousins. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. So uh, we enjoyed each other's company and grew up as brothers yeah. and sisters. So... There was no a uh, vacuum, even if, if I'm the only child. Yeah. Uh, but I never felt that I'm the only one because the presence of others meant I'm in the presence of my brothers and sisters. Yeah. Yeah. And who was working in the household at that time? My grandmother used to work. Mm. Uh, my mother used to work as a domestic worker as well. Mm. Um, uh, I think pretty much all of them worked as uh, uh, domestic workers. And then the firstborn was the only one who had uh, a good job because he worked uh, in different places. But um, the last one, when we're growing up, is Edgar's. She mm. used to work at Edgar's. But she was married already and then having her own house and her own family. But she from time to time come and check us mm. and drop something. But she, she can't afford. I mean, we also stayed with the... Uh, the mother of my grandmother, so yeah. the great grandmother, yeah. she will just go to a shop and buy a bread and a, a king size of coke yeah. and eat there. Yeah. And then when you say to her, ah, why are you eating at the shop? But hey, that woman has got too many children and grandchildren. <laughs> I can't, ah, take rah, rah, I can't take it. Yes, sir. <laughs> if I go in there with this bread, ah, I won't even feel it. Yeah. Yeah, so that's how bad the situation was. Wow, and what were you guys eating at the time? We're eating whatever it's provided, eh. but uh, nothing is guaranteed. You know what, Tlawana go pay. That's why the trick was to go and wait for our mothers at the bus stop. Mm. Because when they come out of the bus, eh. they've got some leftovers. Yes, yes, yes. So you open there. Yeah. And look for something nicer, yeah. because the rest of the other stuff must go there to be shared with everyone. But maybe she came back with some apple mm. or banana. Then you you attack it before you arrive there. Yeah. yeah. And then didn't you ever go to your mom's work, like where she was working as no, a domestic? I've never. I've you never. never, you I've never, never seen. I, the first time I came close to white people was in parliament. I never did anything that included white people. For real? Mm. All these years? I didn't go to school with white people. Yeah. I never played with white people. I never worked with them. Yeah. Yeah. The proximity I have of working with white people is parliament because DA sits next to us. There. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm. <laughs> that's funny. So that's why when white people speak, I struggle to hear. Yeah. yeah because I have to ask them, what are you saying? <laughs> Because they speak differently, <laughs> yeah. So and, and don't they make fun of you because you, you your accent is not like fluent? No, when but you speak they, English. Can, they can make uh, ac- uh, fun of me, but that's not my language. Yeah, uh, it's their language because I, I, if they speak my language, they're also going to sound oh, fun. Yes, their yes, accent is yes, also not yes, going yes, to be yes. uh, the way our accent is when we speak our language. Yeah, so why bother with? someone's uh, language. Would you say that it reminds me of the press conference where uh, you're calling that white guy, hey, don't be cha yeah, yeah. Hey, man, I was like, hey, that's my nigga. That was legendary. So yeah. how, how did your mother uh, pass away? No, my mother had epilepsy. She was epileptic from when I was born. I think she said she got its first attack when she was doing... Uh, standard six, they were doing standard six that time. Mm. And then throughout, she has been epileptic. So I grew up knowing that my mother is sick mm. because uh, she will fall. So as we grow, um, it's me, it's my grandmother, then it's her because people are now moving out into RDP houses, what, what, what. She too got an RDP house, but my grandmother wouldn't allow her to stay there because she said if she gets an attack alone, we'll have a problem. Exactly. So, oh, yes. so they stayed together. Uh. So when she goes, wherever she goes, and then she collapses, let's say on the street or something, yeah. 
My grandmother said, ah, now I'm tired, go and fetch her. <laughs> so you go there, but you are a, a small child, yes. a, ch- a, a boy child. Yeah, yeah. So when you arrive there, you know people in the township when a person has collapsed, mm. they run and then they stand on the side. Mm. You have to go there and cover her, her dresses sure. and then wait for her to wake up. Mm. And then she will wake up and then even after waking up, you don't just take her. She's still disorientated. Mm. Then you from there you take her home. So I grew up under that environment. So the small young boys, they will tease you with such things. Mm. Yes, yes, yeah. Yeah, so um, then you will take her home. But the point I'm trying to make is that then you've got, because you are young boys, you tease each other mm. and say all manner of things with an intention to embarrass. Mm. So having grown up like that, you don't get easily embarrassed mm. by nonsensical mm. things because what happens is that when you grow up, your upbringing uh, makes your character. Yeah, shapes you. Yeah, mm. uh, and therefore... You don't easily get shaken by such things. Which makes sense with you, because yes. people say yes. all sorts of things about you. Yes, yeah. but many say sort of many sort of things about me which they know nothing about. So when when your mother's falling like that, don't people think kibuloi? Because at that time, you know, we don't know what you epilepsy are, is. All types of things uh, will be said, mm. uh, and it's a shikh, I mean, yeah, all is prevalent types of there. things will be said, but um, when. Uh, time goes, you realize that, and the more we get more exposure to information, you realize that some of the things are said to pass time. Mm. They, they, they are not meant for anything. Mm. Uh, people are bored. There's no electricity. There's no TV. There's, we must just find something to, do. to say mm. and do. And then, uh, yeah, uh, you don't take such things... Uh, to heart because the same people who said and 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 were now helping them. Some of them will build them houses. Is it? Because there is nothing personal. Mm. They don't know what they are doing. So God has forgiven them a long time ago. Did you ever encounter Buloy like witchcraft? No, I've never encountered because it doesn't exist. You think it doesn't exist? Mm-mm. So if you exist. wake up one day and find someone naked in your yard planting something, wouldn't what how would you justify that? Wouldn't you say that's Buloy? No. Because those things happen. I, I would think she was lost. <laughs> <laughs> and lost her clothes as well. Yeah. I, I think she will she would be lost because let's take my great grandmother, the mother of my mother I told you about. Mm. She will wake up to go to a bathroom uh, outside. And then when she comes back, she knows she doesn't know where she got out. Mm. She, 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 she can't find the door. Mm, mm. Uh, and then she starts p- pressing everywhere. And then we must be waking up. And if she succeeds to come in, she's going to wake you up trying to find a place where she was sleeping. Yeah. You'll just find a hand on your face. <laughs> 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 so before you know it, you say no. This person is a witch. <laughs> but no, this person is too old. Yeah. Mm. Uh, uh, and the floor's direction and, and you know, uh, we had a case of witchcraft when we were growing up in politics where some person got lost and then that one, he was so unfortunate. Then he was found in a house of a, a, a person who was killed by their child. Mm. That, that child stepped the child of that house and that child died. Subsequent, a year or two, then that other person gets found in that house. Mm. What do you want? I'm lost. But they got lost into a wrong house. Mm. You see? Mm. It's, it's, it's a coincidence. Mm. He was legitimately lost. Mm. But, uh, and then... The all conspiracies were made. We entered that house as comrades. Then they said, no, uh, people tend to into frogs. That's fine. Where are the frogs now? <laughs> Who can't find the frogs? <laughs> so coming, you know, when you grow up, you realize that some of these things is just madness. Mm. It's boredom. We, we had very less activity. But have you ever consulted a Sangomo? My grandmother is a traditional healer. Your so grandmother? A, a traditional healing mm. 
and witchcraft are two different things. Mm. So witchcraft is when you are given a poison to go and poison someone and that person dies. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, that's witchcraft. Mm. Uh, and that is the science of it. Mm. Not this one that a person will use a broom to fly from here to the other <laughs> place. Uh, that, is, uh, that is boredom. But to poisoning people, for whatever reason, it's a witchcraft. So my grandmother was not giving medicine to go bewitch. Mm. It was medicine to heal. Mm. Because the earlier primitive society, before the arrival of the colonialists, yeah. used medicine, traditional medicine, to heal themselves. Mm. And today, many of those herbs are actually included mm. in the so-called Western medicine. Yeah. From they use cars, our yeah. herbs because they've come to appreciate mm. that these herbs uh, do they, help. They've gotten based in vodka now. Yeah, you see, they've got Mpesu in vodka. I don't know if Mpesu works, <laughs> uh, but uh, there is Mpesu because if Mpesu works, then those people who are doing uh, a rhino, rhino pouching, yes, yes, they, yes. they say they want to use the horn for the same purpose of Mpesu, yeah. but uh, research shows that there isn't anything that suggests uh, this thing works for that purpose. But... Uh, Remember, the, 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 the power is in the mind. Mm. If you think it works, hey, you can get very hard. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Very strong. <laughs> very quick. Yeah, and then you are proper. <laughs> you solved your problems. It's in the brain. <laughs> Did your grandmother ever do a reading on you? Like, could she see that you'd become this person that you are now? Well, uh, every parent had a very strong belief in their children. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah but... Uh, my mother was a strong uh, uh, religious person mm. who, when we were engaged in strikes at school, she would just come in front of other parents there to embarrass us. Or when I told you, you're going to be arrested or you'll die or what, you mm. must stop calling me when this guy causes trouble. Mm. Then my grandmother will be there to deal with issues uh, in a perspective manner. Mm. Yeah, And then on her way back, those parents will be insulting her that no, a child of a witch is disrupting school. Yeah, our children can't go to school. What, what, what. Sure. So you're a troublemaker at school? Hmm? You're a troublemaker at school? I was a president of the SRC at grade 8 and caused my first strike at grade 8, which lasted for six months. What were you guys striking for? For fees. For fees. And corporal punishment and the conditions in the schools. Yeah. yeah and the teachers who are sleeping with children. Yo, mm. what school was this? Matlagane, zone ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's a general problem yeah, in all yeah. our, if, if in our schools. Yeah. yeah. Where's your father in all of this? I don't know my father. Mm. Mm. My mother never prepared, was never prepared to talk about it. Yeah. Mm. So you've never met him, you never asked questions, nothing? Nothing. I asked questions. When she passed on, she passed on before my grandmother. Yeah. And then I asked my grandmother, and then my grandmother said, Kaspedi uh, you can't undermine the words of the dead. Oh. They must always be obeyed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So what happened with the, who's this guy? Samuel Manya Pia. Or something like or that. Something like ah, that. I, chance to take I had so many fathers. I made a mistake one day and I spoke in uh, in, the, in an interview that I don't know my father. Yes, yes. They all came out of the woodworks. Yes. The even, woodwork. even from Soweto. <laughs> a person just come from Soweto, he says, no. When Julius's mother visited, so my mother has never visited Soweto. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, I don't deal with chance takers. Yeah. So my grandmother was still alive. My aunt was still alive. And they had the responsibility to deal with those things. Everybody who came, including the one you're talking about, yeah, yeah, yeah. they were like, don't take chances where I'm man. Yeah. Yeah. So what jobs were you doing in Kosi Sheikho before you got into politics? I didn't do any job. Yeah, yeah. You weren't mm, working nothing. Nothing. I did politics when I was very young at grade at nine years because the ANC had something of called the young pioneers, Machupazela, uh Sisulu. Yeah. Yeah. So we go with the uh, other kids when they go to do soccer practice. Yes. And then we take a detour to mm. do something else. Yeah. yeah. So 
Um, I tried soccer, but not playing. So I was a spectator. And when the two teams play, I'm the one who hold the money. So there was some team of some relatively old people. And then this one's of my age. They were playing. So they bet they give me the money to hold. The young ones were winning, mm. and then the old ones were losing. So this guy comes, he says, no, bring the money. The old one, I said, no, yeah. you can't get the money before the game is over. Yes. Yes. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I felt the ding. Yeah, 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 yeah. I saw the stars. Is it that thing they say they will beat you and you'll see stars? The stars, yeah. It's not a joke, it's real. That thing. Yeah. I was taking that money from my pocket <laughs> on, on the floor and I threw it. I was on the floor and threw it. <laughs> that was my last time at the, those things of <laughs> football. I'm like, these guys are, are violent. I yeah. can't, <laughs> I can't play with this type of people, no. At nine years old, when you get into politics, what does that mean? What are you doing? So they teach us uh, songs. Um, we find some bush there, teach us songs. They teach us poems. And then they teach us how to help them when they march. For instance, uh, when there is going to be a march, because we are young, we then push tires before they start marching. Okay. And then we know where they are going to barricade. Mm. So we go pushing the tires, and then we go stop there where they are going to barricade. Mm. And then they arrive, uh, and then they bend the tires to barricade the road. Wow. Uh, or I remember in 1994, yeah. one of my tasks was to remove the National Party posters in the township because the National Party was putting posters for the first time in the township in 1994. Oh, you had to remove them? Yeah, and those posters were strategically put either at the police station or where there is lights, like poles and... and, and. So I had to fetch from a police station, oh. remove them at the police station at night, and then uh, um, you, you, you carry them. You see the way they hang them on the pole. You hang them here on your neck sure. because they are too heavy. Mm. I remember one day I was uh, having that task and then uh, the soldier's car came. Soldiers used to uh, raid the township. So they came. I had to lie low and then crawl with those uh, posters to the next street because to the principal, I must present some form of evidence. Mm. And uh, the other day I had to remove, uh, the, when you enter Shio, there is a, what do you call it, uh, this Apollo light, yeah. like at the circle, it was uh, the only one. So they put their poster up there, it was too far. So I had to climb that Apollo without <laughs> step leather to go. When I'm there, up there, the car comes <laughs> of the police. I had to blend into that pool and sleep on it like this. Sure. And these fools, they just park there briefly. Yeah. And then they leave. From there, I must come down with that thing. So I just uh, removed the ropes and then released. So I went down with that pool. <laughs> I took the poster out sure. to go and show these guys. That sounds like a uh, movie, the, the, man. The task was performed. Yes, sir. Yeah. So when you're doing all of this, when do you get time to date? Are you even dating at that time? No, I think it was not a priority. But we're also very scared of them because we had nothing to offer. The ladies? Yeah, the, 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 there was no uh, good clothes to present yourself. <laughs> uh, there was no any juice or sweets yeah. to offer. Yeah. So... Um, it was less of our priorities. So when do you break your virginity? If anything. Ah, I don't think uh, I can remember. You don't remember? Ah, ah everyone remembers their first time. Yeah? Was it teens, 20s? <laughs> yeah, we were very uh, active when we were teens. <laughs> You've always been an activist. Yeah, we were very <laughs> active. <laughs> because remember at grade 8, I will leave my township to go into other townships like Nguankua, yeah. Toyando, to eh. establish the structures of Kosas. 
COSAS, it was a student organization of the uh, ANC at the time. Yeah. So we're engaged in all types of shenanigans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As it were, yeah. With color. Huh? With color. There's no way. <laughs> it's part of growing up. <laughs> <laughs> to deny that will be to deny a particular stage in your life. Yeah, yes. yeah. Yes. Jeez, yeah. Man. I think he was 13, 14. I'm, I'm getting those yeah, vibes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at 14, you were the, the, the chairperson, right, of the Youth League branch yeah. in Shishiku. Yeah. Didn't you face challenges, like leading people who are older than you? Because as a 19-year-old, I'm, I'm sure it's tough to listen to a 14-year-old. And remember in, the Varam Club. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> in all the structures I've led, um, I've led people who were older than me. Um, I don't know where I got the wisdom, but majority of the time, I was either the youngest or the second youngest. Uh, so the same thing when I became president of COSAS, when I became president of the Youth League, I led with people who were older. Yeah. Yeah. And um, at school, uh, remember we went to school with very old people. People could go, leave school, go to work, raise some money, come back, and then pay for their own fees. And when you are older and strong, like this one is uh, carrying weights, I become your friend. Mm. Yeah, and I start telling you some ideas of well, how things can be done. And, and you're like, hey, this young man is proper. Mm. So from there, you're my bodyguard. Yeah. You're not aware that no one can touch me because <laughs> I've got this guy. <laughs> and uh, even when we say we're going on strike, the grade 12, will want to resist, or no, can't be told by these boys. Yeah. So I'm going to call these old ones, or let's go and show them. Yeah. And then they come. Yeah. So it has always been my life. Yeah. Only now, in the EFF, do I come into contact with Young people, people that I'm older than. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm. Mm. That's amazing. So when do you start meeting Winnie Mandela, Mam Winnie, Nelson? I met Winnie when I was uh, a president of uh, Cossas. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no, I met her before that. I, I met her before that in the Cossas uh, conference because there couldn't be a Cossas conference without her being there. Okay. Because we made a, a honorary president mm. of Cossas. What, what year is this? Uh, I don't remember. Mm -hmm. We're young. Yeah, we're very young. Yeah. And then... Nelson Mandela, I made, I met him when he came out of prison and came to Bulgan for the first time. So I was uh, part of the marshals. Mm. So when you are marshals, you, your job is to control the crowd. So we do a human chain mm. uh, to block these people from accessing Madiba because he must move freely, waving. And, and, and he didn't know you at the time. Yeah, uh, me, I broke that chain and I went to shake the hand. Yeah. Wow. And then the day was made, I went home. Yeah. I <laughs> left that chain. <laughs> <laughs> I was gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gone. Yeah. yeah. So it is those memories that inspire your political interest. Sure. Because I remember the other day, um, uh, Peter Mugaba was coming to address in a college called Gwenamulot in Sishiu. And then uh, I was given a task to control the door which he's going to use. But I knew this guy, but I didn't know the face. So they said, no, Peter Mugaba will use this door. Ah, uh, no problem. The guy came and said, open. I said, no ways. You are not going to enter. Yeah. Then the security said, hey man, chief, this is the president. Open the door. Yeah. I said, there's no one. You people are like that. You just come here and claim all types of leadership. <laughs> and then that guy left the door. He went to enter through the main door. Mm. Yes, yes, the commotion that happened inside mm. the thing. Then I realized I messed up. <laughs> <laughs> I realized I, I just bet. <laughs> and you didn't get fired. <laughs> yeah, everybody is so happy. Like, for real, it's him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so we always had a way of 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 getting into contact with the leadership, 
and get inspired and and you realize that it is possible they they did that the same thing to us now well yeah. to me when i was trying to park downstairs here yeah. the guys with the guns yeah. i'm like i'm here to interview julius to like i when nga khuma masimba man ngamo pokala <laughs> and they did the same thing to Tibo Tachi yesterday he was coming to see me yeah. we agreed we were going to have lunch here yeah for some reason i got into a meeting yeah. he doesn't communicate that i'm on my way he goes to the reception they said no it's not going to happen yeah and then he they says no we and they say no they are all in a meeting so you can't see them So he thinks they don't know him. Yeah. Then he ah, you know what let me leave these people. Eh. He says no okay thank you bye but Tibos <laughs> can we take a picture? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. They are just saying we are not fighting with you. <laughs> we are just doing our job. We love you so much but eh, yeah uh, you can't pass. <laughs> Let's talk about the journey of you becoming the president of the NC Youth League. Yes. How does, how does that come about? Like what's the trajectory? Well, I became when I was Cosas president, I was called back home yeah. to become the provincial secretary of the youth league. Okay. I think I did that when I was 24 years old or 25. Mm. Then uh, contesting with very old people. Um I did that for five years because the term was two years. So I won uh the first conference contested the next two conferences no one contested me because mm. if you make a mistake of giving me an opportunity to lead mm. i will lead to the best of my ability to a point where even the enemy thinks he's the right guy mm. yeah so mm. let's let's leave him so then we were sitting in polokwane uh, with mbalula and uh, zizi I think we even called that day about the passing away of someone. Mm. I can't remember either Brad Cable or something because they were both crying that their father <laughs> that their father died. <laughs> <laughs> so then this guy says to me, "Who do you think can be president of the youth league?" Yeah. Kerno Sitles Gala. Then he says Uh, okay why can no see this gala and them is the last generation in terms of age they are living yeah so let's give them the last chance and then off they go mm. see this gala was the sg of the youth league at the time mm. ah that guy says no man i think you are wrong i say what do you mean he says no you can be president of wow. the youth league that time he's the president of the youth league and you had no ambitions to be no, the no 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 yeah. not me not me yeah. not me yeah. Uh, like I explained mm. generationally yes, is yes. the right thing mm. yeah, but respect. you know when a seed is planted like that then I go oh my mother, that guy I think I, I can be president of the youth <laughs> yeah the whole president mm. then it means I can be mm. so anyone who spoke against my name I started feeling hurt so yeah <laughs> why why are you saying that <laughs> So the interest started developing. Yeah. How does it work like are you chosen by the NC to be the president? No, the How branches of the of the youth league. Branches okay. of the youth league go and elect delegates to the national conference. They gather under one roof not less than 5000 people. Mm. And then they choose their president. Mm. Yes, but leadership will always play a role in influencing yes. those branches who to choose and and and. Mm. Yes. Zuma didn't want me. He didn't. No. Yeah. I think uh, he had it in his blood that this guy is going to cause trouble. Yeah. <laughs> so when when Mangawung Zuma was consulted and he said, "No. I didn't they didn't say this one. They said Saki." Yeah. So you guys are saying something else. Well, we got elected and uh, be eventually accepted mm. yeah but mm. then he was drifting away yeah. from us yeah and seeing us as a potential problem yeah man i got to tell you when you were the nc youth league president it's mm. the first time i ever heard of you mm. and i'm like who's this guy man he mm. just shoots from the hip mm. he just tells it like it is and i think for a lot of people we started getting interested in like you know politics because you were so entertaining mm. mm-hmm. was that was that con- uh, did you do that on purpose or is just that's who i am But that's what they say about you now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the 
say we must not come here. You are homophobic. You have no respect for women. Uh, you are going to ask me about sex and 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 I say to them, the question will never be a problem. The problem is the answer. Mm. It all lies in how you answer, answer. the question. Mm. But the question must be asked. Mm. It doesn't matter how comfortable or uncomfortable the question may be. Yeah. But answer the question. So yeah. uh, I was I was being like you. I was being youth. Mm. And being youth means you must not apologize. Mm. And being youth means that you've got a license to make mistakes. Of course. But learn from those mistakes and not repeat them because if you repeat them, it's a decision. Mm. It's no longer a mistake. So young people must be free mm. and young people must never be judged. Mm. You guys have got too much energy that must be harnessed and channeled to the right direction. Uh, not to be condemned. Yeah. The youth of today, the youth of... It's, it's, it's absolute nonsense. There's no youth of today. That which we are doing today, they did it. Mm. They did it. M Mandela was worse. Mm. Mandela fought fiscally in meetings with people who were not agreeing with him. Mm. Mandela was a boxer. He took it to meetings. Mm. Yes. He disrupted Communist Party meetings because he, they didn't believe that the Communist Party must exist. Mm. President Kuma went to Mandela's house there in Soweto. Uh, Winnie tells this story during our DC, our DC in the ANC. He says, these ones have not done anything. Kuma came to my house, the then president of the ANC, and I, when I'm, I was about to open a gate for him, he refused and stood outside. I must tell that Nelson and Walter that this ANC does not belong to them. And then he left. That's how much they made the president of the ANC angry. Sure. But president of the <coughs> ANC, Kuma, did not destroy Mandel. And when he asked the question, where will we be if Kuma had destroyed Mandela at that time when he was angry with the youth? Hmm. So Mandela and, and, and his generation of the youth mm. are the ones who radicalized the ANC and made the ANC to carry guns. Mm. Because the ANC between 1912 and 1949, it was fighting through letters. They were sending letters and deputations to London. Mm. When the Youth League was formed in 1944, he said, no, this is nonsense. We must take guns and kill these people. Hmm. This over-celebrated Mandela mm. carried a gun with an intention to kill white people. Hmm. And that story is not being told because they want to create this the wrong image, yeah. impression mm. of, of the nurse. There was a president of the Youth League who, no, that was Muila, one of the presidents of the Youth League, Robert Resha, said in a meeting of the ANC and the youth, that revolutionaries must adapt to the concept of murder mm. as a revolutionary activity. Mm. So it's the youth. Mm. So 1976 youth, you want to speak about them as if they, they, they were these the people who, who, who came from a, a, a different planet. Yeah. No, you know what they did? They went into Shebins mm. and went to kick the bottles and African beers of the elders. Huh. Kick them rudely. Not the 76. What do you mean? Eh. 76. After they were shot, the, first, the second action was directed to Shebins. They kicked the alcohols, they demolished the bottle stores, and then they were climbing on top of those tables and saying, children are dying, you are drinking alcohol. Oh. And then that is respectful in mm. the definition of those who want to be holier than thou. Mm. It's mm. not true. It was the youth being the youth. Mm. It was charged and it needed direction. Mm. Someone grabbed that opportunity and said, this youth is charged. Mm. It needs to be given direction. That's why they went into exile to be trained, to be given political education. The first statement of the ANC, by the way, condemned the student uprising in 1976. What? And said the students must go to the class. They belong to the class. Mm. Wow. Yeah. They, they don't tell you that. Mm. Yes. So, there is nothing you are doing that 
um, uh, is unusual. You you are being the youth. You are you you are, you, you want to push the boundaries mm. and see how far you can go mm. with your. And that's what we we're doing in the mm. youth league. Mm. Mm. Yeah, and you, yeah, you push the doing. boundaries. Yo, yo, yo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you push them. Eh? And then when we arrived in parliament, we did the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, we pushed the boundaries. They said there are rules. We said, bring here. We read the rules. <laughs> and then we realized these people don't know the rules. We need to push them. Every time they say, no, you are wrong. We say, according to which rule? Yeah. They say to us, no, you, mo you can't say uh, Malema. You must say honorable Malema. Yeah. Then we say they, there's nothing honorable about this person. Hey. No, the rules say you must call each other honorable. They say, you're lying. Which rule? And then they go to read the rule. The rule says you must not call each other by name. Mm. So meaning you must say Mr., Miss, or Mrs. Mm. So they found white people calling each other honorable. Mm. Then they took it and then continued <laughs> with it. They thought it was in the rules from 1994. It took the arrival of the EFF in parliament for those fools to know that we are not forced to call these honorable people honorable. Mm, 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 we have mm, an alternative. Mm, mm. They didn't know. So had we listened to the, this nonsensical criticism, mm. we will not be where the EFF is. But the problem is also with the middle class. Mm. It doesn't know what it wants. Mm. It says all types of things. It, it can turn you into an amoeba. You will be shapeless. What's an amoeba? You are a shapeless animal. Mm. Yeah, you get pulled this way, you get pulled this way. Before you know it, we don't know where, where is the figure, where is... <laughs> you are shapeless because you, you are pulled all direction. Yeah. You must take a position. Mm. And, and stand by it. Yeah. Only time will tell yeah. if you're correct or not. Mm. When we started Zuma's thing, everybody said we were crazy. Yeah. Everybody. It was unheard of. And then when the matter came to an end, everybody was crazy. If we were crazy, then they were all crazy. Yeah. There was no one. You see, with Ramaphosa now, we told them this guy is a greedy businessman. Hmm. You can't have a businessman as a president, he's yeah. going to prioritize money over the interest. Hi, hi, hi. There he's sleeping on top of man. <laughs> and I, 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 I thought it was a billion. I thought it was only 60 million. Uh -uh. It's a billion. Uh -uh. It's a lot of money. <laughs> they only stole 60 million, but there was a billion in there. Yeah. They couldn't even take all of it. That's how much it was. Yeah. The, 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 and that's how capital works. Mm. It, it, it thrives on making and making and making more money. Mm. So they don't know the limit. Why is that the case? Why do people abuse state funds and just want more money? Like, we get it. No country doesn't have corruption. Yeah. It's all around the world, right? But at least, like, eat, but let the electricity work. Let the yeah. roads be fixed. We wouldn't even care. Yeah. There's no corruption in China. Mm. Mm -mm. You'll die. Hmm. They'll kill you. Mm. Mm, there's no corruption in Cuba. Those are socialist states. Yeah. They are not driven by Capitalism. market fundamentalism. They are driven by the interest of the people. So in a capitalist society, the interest is I must make as much money as possible. Even let's take ESCOM, for instance. There is absolutely nothing wrong with ESCOM. Mm. You must make it dysfunctional before you sell it so that everybody buys into the idea of you selling it. Yeah. There was nothing wrong with SAA. There was an airline now, now, recently, privately owned. It collapsed. It failed. And then you are privatizing the SAA because mm. you want to create an impression that when they are privately owned, they are, they are successful. Mm. What about this privately owned one that has just collapsed? Mm which is a clear evidence that it's not true that when they are privately owned, they don't collapse. Mm. The job of SAA is not to make profit, mm. by the way. Mm. Mm -mm. It's, to, it's to transport people. So it's a means of transport. Mm. So the state must subsidize it. The least SAA can do is to generate enough money to run it. It must not run at a loss. Mm. It must generate enough money, break even, mm. to run itself. Mm. 
not to make profit and say, yo, oh, SAA has made a lot of profit. What profit for what? Mm. We don't want we don't want to make money out of SAA. It's an intervention of the state mm. in that mode of transport. Because if we don't, only white people will fly. Yes. And the super rich. Mm. So we want you to also fly to Cape Town. Mm. Otherwise you'll use train. So the state must subsidize that. And I've got a problem with you, um, uh, the people of the middle class. When the state pays, you have a problem. Hi, hi, we have been paying. Mm. We have been paying. The job of the state is to pay. <laughs> that is his job. Yeah. There at my house, I, I pay. Mm. I, I can't one day complain, hey, I'm paying here. Yeah. Mm. I'm paying. No, I pay. Mm. I can raise complaints, Urbana. This thing is. I just bought six two days ago. What happened? <laughs> but no, they are finished. <laughs> I must pay. Yeah, yeah. If I'm going to be a responsible father, I'm going to say, hey, I'm no longer paying. No more eating of tinkies. Yeah. They'll go and eat them next door and worship the people next door. We were saying the same thing on the previous episode yeah. with ESCOM. They're creating the chaos and they're going to provide the solution. Because yeah. right now, if they say pay an extra thousand rand and there's no load sharing, I will gladly pay yeah. that. Because we're desperate now. Because we're desperate now. But the problem is in the old infrastructure, which will not take more than 24 months to fix. And if you don't have capacity, the Chinese can come and do it for you uh, at a cost. They, but they will do it. And they will do it to your own spec. You must do the spec. The Chinese will do it. They are more than willing. Mm. They, why, why is there no train? A, a fast train between here and Musina, with so many cars and so many accidents. If we get a, a fast train, which is not a, a hallucination or madness, yeah. it's possible. It's running already in, in China. Mm. If the Chinese can do it, they can do it for us and we pay them. Mm. We've got a lot of minerals. Mm. We can go and mine gold for them and pay them with gold. Of course. Or diamond or whatever. And they need them for the... They need me. Then we reduce this. No. We found trans networking. Transporting tons and tons of minerals. We have collapsed Transnet. As a result, there are too many tracks on the road. Huh. And too many tracks on the road means death. Because many of them are not in good condition. Many of them just turn the way they like because mm. they know they are not at risk. Mm. Let's go and fix Transnet. So infrastructure is collapsing right on our face. Yeah, yeah it's bad. Eh? There is no road in South Africa without a pothole. Yeah. And they're getting bigger and bigger, these yeah. potholes. Then. <laughs> and no one is doing anything. But South Africans will be worried about a man who goes to Ibiza with his wife <laughs> when they've got so many problems. <laughs> I'm not their president. <laughs> they've elected their own government. Yeah. Eh? South Africa, you've got the government you deserve. So why do you think this generation of politicians uh, are so corrupt? Is it because they're not used to money? No, 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 no. no. It is because they are being corrupted by white people. Is it? Yeah, so because you... People speak about corruption as if it's a black people's thing. Yes, yes, true. It's a, it's a white man's thing. Why? The, uh, business, when you say business is corrupting government, you mean whites are corrupting black people because business is white. Yes. And then government is black. black. Yeah. And this government can't be corrupt with, with itself. It needs someone to be corrupt with. Oh. So it's it corrupt with the business. And this business is white. Mm. So, uh, but these whites never get arrested. Eh. But what about the corruption where, like, for example, PPE money during COVID is child and there's no white business involved. It's money that, you know, filtrates down from the government, from whatever international body that has loaned us. That doesn't involve no, private no, business. No, no, no. The, the, no. Any, there's a white person involved because no, none of you have got machines to do mask. You've got, you've got no machine to do mask. You go and take the mask from a white man. So the white man says, uh, Hamilton and Love, go and get that tender 
and then I will I will print for you. Mm. Mm. Go and do it, and then I will print for you. There's there's you can't do business in South Africa without any involvement of a white person. Yeah, true. no, not a single one. Not true. even the EFF true. can try and say no. Um, we we were a party of black people, therefore we can do without whites. Ah, uh, it's not possible. Mm. So. The question we need to ask is, why do we see only this government people exposed and arrested? What is happening in the private sector? Hmm. Because it's both the public and the private sector that are corrupting each other. Yes. But only the public gets arrested because it's easy for a black man to criticize, correctly so, mm. another black man. Mm. You know why black people are scared of white people? It's not a joke. Even me, huh. when I see a white person, my attitude changes. Like, we're traumatized people. Mm. Like, then my political conscience has to kick in. Or like, Ay, don't try those things with me, mm. man. But otherwise, <laughs> the first reaction <laughs> is, 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 is eh, we need to get ourselves. Our uh, accents our, change. Yes. Mm. Over. So I've got a, a, a white security guy. When he sees that there's going to be a problem there, yeah. and he's working from behind, he moves to the front. Mm. Oh, they are going to open. Yeah. And then I say to him, no, don't don't move to the front. Let this one go. Ah, you are going to find that guy still explaining where he was born <laughs> and what. <laughs> ah. well, black people were generally very scared of white people. Yeah. yeah. So that that's why even now they so are not talking about them. In are you talking about the thing. Stellenbosch mafia? Very scared of them. Ne? Are very scared. Very 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 scared. They essentially are running the country. Yeah, it's theirs. It's theirs. None of us in this room woke up this morning without using something that comes from the rupees. Yeah. Mm. Mm. And the, the, the Oppenheimers own all the minerals mm. because uh, the Oppenheimers are the descendants of uh, Rhodes. Uh, and Rhodes is the man who discovered these uh, minerals. The Oppenheimers actually designed the political system of South Africa to an extent that they were themselves directly members of parliament yeah. of South Africa. So as and when the law changes to control the political dynamics and the landscape in South Africa, you must know it's sponsored by the Oppenheimers because they control mm. the politics of South Africa. So how do the Guptas get away with it? They didn't get away with anything. Sure. Mm. They were trying. <laughs> ah, they were trying. <laughs> it's more complex than that. It's, it's not uh, this thing of tenders. Yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. No. You, the, owners, the ownership of the strategic means of production. The ownership of the... Not ownership of a newspaper and get a person to advertise in that newspaper. Mm. Therefore, you have captured the state. No. Mm. The, the question should be, who owns the strategic means of production? That includes the, 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 bank, the, the banks, mm. the mines, the monopoly industries, yes, yes, the yes. land. Yes. Yeah. Then not, the Guptas tried not to own any of these things. They tried that thing of the coal uh, in ESCOM uh, with Glencoe, because generally Glencoe itself is corrupt and it is admitted to that. Mm. But otherwise, there was nothing with the Guptas. Mm. So the Guptas took business of white people here and there, here and there, and the, the white people were not happy with them. And they made a terrible mistake of wanting to take a fire blade uh, private airport from the, uh, the Oppenheimers mm. because mm. Malusi gave it to Oppenheimers. Then Zuma changed his mind and said, no, give to this ones." Mm. Then Malusi said, no, I never gave to the open armors. And he denounced his own signature. They took him to court. The court said, this is your signature. You lied under oath. Hmm. Because they want. So when they wanted to take the airport from the open armors, the open armors said, what? Are you crazy? We thought you were doing those things of yours there. Now you are coming Ooh. to wrong people. Mm. They went for them big time. Mm. Yes. They went for them big time. I hear a lot of people say that uh, under Zuma's regime, a lot more black millionaires, people were eating in the government, tenders and whatnot. But since Cyril, like, I, he's closed the taps. Taps are dry. Yeah, what do you think about that? No, no, the white people, 
were scared under Zuma's regime. Yeah. And uh, they needed black protection and they called it BEE. Mm, mm. Yes. And one of my biggest uh, gripes with uh, Cyril is that if there were BEE partners in all the deals that were happening in ESCOM, for instance, all those BEE people have been removed mm. everywhere. Why? The whites say, no, we don't need any protection. We've got our men. Mm. We've got our men. But they don't vote for him. Mm. They don't trust him because white people do not trust black people. Mm. Yes. There is, there is there in uh, Sandest. Yeah. That word belongs to the DA. If whites feel so strong about him and support him, why are they not voting ANC in Sundays where Cyril stays? Ooh. Because they love him. Mm. But this Cyril is not, it's nothing Cyril. Those people didn't vote for Nelson Mandela. There were two elections which were held in 1994. Go where Mandela voted and check if those people voted ANC in 1994. The answer is no. Mm. And then there was... 1997 transitional local council elections here in Houghton. Mm. Mandela went door to door recruiting people to join the ANC. He got more than 200 members to join the ANC. When the results came, he, he got less than 50 votes <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> with registered members of the ANC because yeah. that's how much pretentious white people are. Mm. They did it to Madiba. They never voted for him. But every time they want to hypnotize you, they say, Madiba said, mm. as if they loved him. If they loved him, why didn't they vote for him? Mm. One day, I was sitting with Mazoti in their group of white people. They say, no, guys, uh, we must go vote, we must go vote. Uh, Cyril is a good guy. So Mazoti says, oh, so we are not voting for DA. No, 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 we don't mean it like that. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> don't mean it like that. They vote DA, despite the fact that they say they love Cyril. Yeah. yeah. Do you have any funders, like uh, the EFF, does it have any funders who belong to the Stellenbosch Mafia? No. We never got any money from any Stellenbosch Mafia. And um, our funding comes from Parliament and the IEC and the party levies mm -hmm. uh, that we collect from uh, EFF public representatives. We've got more than 1,000 public representatives, uh, MPLs, MPs, councillors, uh, speakers, uh, deputy mayors, and so on and so forth. So those people pay every month mm. what we call a, a party levy because a party must take care of itself. Yeah. Mm. If it can't, um, it will end up being available to the highest bidder. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Yes. How much does it cost to start a party? Like if I woke up tomorrow and I want to start a party. It's very expensive. Ne? Yeah, it's very expensive. How much? Uh, billions? If I, if I fail now, I won't try it again. <laughs> 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 well, uh, it's not billions at a call. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, if you come to think of it, this one collects this one in Musina, this one collects this one in Mtata, this and... It's, it's a lot of money. So it's crowdfunding? Uh, not crowdfunding. Mm. Um, uh, you go to individuals yeah. to ask for support. You go to sympathizers <laughs> to ask for support. Yeah. At the beginning, yeah. when you're not in parliament, yeah. you get nothing from parliament or the IEC. Yes, yes. Mm. You don't get anything. So when you started, weren't you scared? Because like, obviously, you're starting EFF now just from the ANC with people not taking your calls now. You were outcast. Was it, was, wasn't it difficult? No, it was not a difficult because the first thing first you must have is a political will. Okay. Money should not even be preoccupy your mind. Mm. You must have a political will. And the political will is anything that you speak about and you feel it inside your stomach, mm. then you mean it. You will do everything in your power to make sure that you achieve it. Mm, mm. It doesn't matter the obstacles. Mm, mm. No, you fight. Yeah, yeah, because uh, what uh, obstacles did uh, you come across when you were studying? Well, the, 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 firstly, they attacked me. They yeah. took everything from me. Everything. Yeah, everything. They took my houses. They took my cars. They Ooh. took everything. Well, weren't those under your name? Mm, they were under my name. So how did they take them? No, they were uh, sequestrating me, SARS. Oh, okay. Yes. yes. So. If you want to deal with a political opponent, 
the quickest way to deal with a political opponent is to send SARS to that political oh, opponent. Oh, okay. Because it doesn't matter how good your auditor might be. Yes. They will always find, find a loophole, yeah. yes. And then the second one is the NPA charge with no intention to win, mm. but just have the dark cloud hanging mm. over his head. Mm. So that's what they do. But if you know that none of this is true, mm. you will not be shaken by these things because in South Africa, we've got a, a law. They might try to tamper with it, mm. but the laws are there in South Africa and some judges still have conscience. So mm. we fought them. Um, um, I, I went to, one day I was driving to, uh, I don't know where I was going, at uh, Grayston, and I saw the emblem of uh, an insurance company, I forgot the name now. Mm. And it looked very familiar. Man. So I, I drove inside there. Remember they took everything from me, yeah. and then I made a plan, I bought a, a second hand or fifth hand or seventh hand <laughs> Mercedes Benz C one eighty for ninety thousand for ninety thousand so I'm driving I go into Santin. I see a sign there, so I let me drive in. So I take out my ID I say I'm here to collect my money. Mm. They say, Okay, bring your ID, they check. But no, you've got this money. You know when uh, they were doing that thing of World Cup? Yes, 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 yes. So they said we must save money. It, when World Cup comes, we it, can afford to buy tickets. Yeah, yeah. So I saved that money for World Cup, but never got to use it during World Cup because I was a VIP. Yes, So yes. I didn't need to buy a ticket. <laughs> so I forgot that there is such a money that I saved for World Cup. Then I was saving money Apart from that, saving money with that institution. Yeah. So that money I'd saved almost 350000 Wow, that's a lot. Yeah. And mm. then they transferred it immediately. Mm. And then when they transferred it immediately, I left, I went to my landlord. Mm. I transferred the money for the rental for the whole year. Yeah. And I said to Floyd, Floyd, if we are going to fight this people, we can't fight them from Malamulel. Mm. We must be here. Mm. So we're going to pay rental the whole year. We stay in Joburg and ah. we fight with them. Yeah. Yeah. And then we paid the rental. It's a girl called Oma who came, found the house like this, empty. Said, no, uh, look for some money. I'll go and buy furniture. What, what. So I gave her money. She went to buy some furniture. What, what. Then we're fine. That's crazy. So, but the, my bedrooms were solid. Mm. And you know what saves my bedrooms? These guys are coming to take the furniture from my house. Then they, they don't go to the bedroom. Mm. The first one comes, he says, hey, we can't go to your bedroom. Your wife is sleeping. That time I'm not married. I don't have a wife. Yeah. Girl, no, you can go. There's no problem. There's no wife. This one says, no, yeah, let's go. He says, there's no wife. Kerry, hey, chief, you didn't hear what this guy is saying. Yeah. He says, when the wife is sleeping, you can't go that side. What are you, you want to see a naked? <laughs> you want to see a naked? There are two white people. Yeah. No, no, Mr. Maga, don't do that, man. Don't do that. <laughs> Oi, you want to see, they said when the wife is there, you don't go. Yeah. Yeah, are you done? <laughs> but yeah, we're done, got to, uh, out. And then they left. That's how I saved my bedroom. Yeah. Yeah, they couldn't go in because that one gave me something I didn't know. Yeah. In, when there is a woman inside, yeah. they don't go. Yeah. Um, Why don't they assassinate you? I've got a very powerful ancestors. Mm. Yeah. I, 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 they don't play. I, I see trouble uh, before it happens. Oh, wow. And... Uh, 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 I cause trouble. I, I, no, I don't get into trouble. I cause it. Mm. Yeah. I take a decision that will cause trouble now. Yeah. Let's do it. And you've never feared for your life? No. Why? I joined politics for two things. We either are going to die or we are going to win. Mm. And we believed that one day we will win. Mm. So for us to be here, it's American. Mm. When I turned 40, 
I died many times ago <laughs> because we were told we're going to die. Mm. Uh, and, and you were ready to and die. And we're not scared. Mm. No, we're not scared. We knew how to operate a firearm at a very early age. We carried firearms with us on daily basis. You see, so death is nothing. Mm. Yeah, nobody threatens me with death. So what if bodyguards then? It's for order. Because not being scared to die should not be confused for suicide. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to commit suicide. You, I'm not going to die a coward where yeah. I'm just found with a lowered guard. No. Yeah. When a fight comes, it must find me prepared. <laughs> and then we must take it toe for toe. Yeah. Ah, don't die like you were found in a bottle store. <laughs> How much time do you have there? You own one hour. One hour? Five minutes. Oh, okay, ah, perfect. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You said you could handle a gun from an early age. Yeah. You ever shot, shot someone or shot at someone? Well, uh, it's incriminating that question. <laughs> <laughs> what if you were fighting for free? <laughs> <laughs> now you want me to go to prison? Yeah. No, maybe and fighting for you. No, maybe as a freedom fighter, you know? No, That's not that incriminating. It's a. It's a, it's a <laughs> Because then the next thing is going to be who? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when? Where? When? Where? Have you ever been to prison? No. Yo, you've no, never. No, no. But uh, uh, the first time we got arrested, I think we acted in a very stupid way. So we went on a strike and then police came. Uh, so when we go to cause a strike, isn't it we wear school uniform? Yes. So we wear school uniform with a, inside the shirt with a casual t shirt. Mm. And then when we start, and then police come, we run, and then the nearest house, you take off this uh, school shed. Yes. Just throw it inside that house mm. and stand by the gate mm. there and watch the kids running. Because yes. you are not part of them. Of course. So we saw kids being arrested. Mm. So our president of the SRC at the time says to us, we're meeting there at the shopping complex. He says to us, no, no, no. We can't allow kids to be arrested uh, uh, in our name. We must hand ourselves over. Mm. <laughs> we want to be revolutionaries. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and then the problem starts. But no, we must go home, collect uh, toiletries, yeah. and then uh, go, we'll meet here and then go together to the police station. Yeah. Toiletries? Hey. What is toiletries? Yeah. Where am I going to get toiletries? Because there, were the first lap, hmm, the first cloth we're using, That's the belong, yeah, it belongs to Magog. Yeah, yeah. If you take that thing and she looks for it and she doesn't find it, when you come back from that prison, there's going to be trouble. Yes. <laughs> you uh, want to stay in prison. Go home, pretend like you are going to take it to a letter <laughs> and come back with the rest and go yeah. uh, 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 to police station. Mm -hmm. When we arrive there, Hey, we're pretending. Mm. But this one of our boss who behaves like Mandela, but we've been looking for you. Mm. Yeah. Hey, they went for him in front of us. So, it was so bad. Yeah. yeah. And then they kept us there for two days, three days. Then my mother comes to see me. You know, you are, you are never in trouble as long as you don't see any parent, nothing. We're all the same. Yeah. But uh, Julia's mother, my mother is here to visit you. Yeah. Oh, girl, oh, old lady. <laughs> she's going to solve this thing, I know. Eh? Uh, she arrives there, she's got a pup, and then uh, that uh, tin fish yeah. of uh, Tito Mboen. <laughs> Puts in that thing, says, yeah, take, you are useless. I told you, you are going to be arrested. Yeah. And then she turned and left. When she turned and left, that's when I realized we are in big trouble. Wow. Even this one can't solve this problem. <laughs> I know this one to be my guy, but she's doing everything. <laughs> she can sort it out. Uh, I accepted my fate. Yeah. I arrived there, I gave those guys the food. I couldn't even eat. You had no appetite. No <laughs> appetite, nothing. That time we're busy getting arrested for drinking and driving. Yeah. Imagine yes. how yes. life has changed. I heard you saying, no, the youth must not do, get involved with government, what, what. You you must know, you know, don't use this platform to depoliticize the youth. Yeah, the day you guys get depoliticized, 
that's when the enemy is going to be very happy because no, its intention uh, mm. is to depoliticize you but no what i was saying is yeah. that and, uh, and this thing of yours say no we don't need government we can do it on our own it's not true you can't we are we are living proof of that no well, what is this you 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 call it what you call it what this eh? this we must give you the best of the best equipment that you can televise this thing uninterrupted interactive live now you can't do it utsor laptop e one mumu you are doing it utsor laptop e one why is the government not identified it's the job of the government you are excusing them by saying you can do it on your own yeah. you are excusing them yeah the government must identify potential mm. and where ideas are brilliant mm. put money mm. Mm. yeah and whether that idea is going to succeed or not we don't care but you but know we that's not how it, it you know that's not how it works no but that's how it's supposed to work it's all and about brown how, envelopes who do you ah, know connections no brown envelope no no brown envelope no brown envelope um, uh, 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 is it japan uh the toyota japan mm, yeah, you see yeah. toyota mm, mm. toyota was formed by the state yes, it yes. failed mm. it failed many times the state never stopped putting money in it mm. and said this thing is a waste of money look at what toyota is today so as if because if I, the will was there as if if how come you've never put money into this into what into uh, this podcast they say you are homophobic <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you bash women and and because we were going to put money during election yes. you must ask them yeah they, yeah, they said no yeah. the, the women said no oh the so women said no oh, this the one woman. doesn't yeah. respect us blah blah and i'm like what do we do over a period of time um uh, should we drop him in a a dustbin of history mm. and destroy more you go there and engage mm. to a point where as he grows he comes to appreciate that mm. we are not america because the things you are saying here they are saying them already in america mm. uh, and uh, we may come to appreciate what you are doing now in the next 20 years mm. Mm. but you may want to yourself to always look at time and space mm. without being a madala magogo mm. and without being a traditional platform be the unique platform you want to be but certain things we we can say them without saying them mm. to defend the character of, of this platform but we are not going to sit back and say no this black, black child <laughs> must be destroyed mm. Uh, mm. Uh, and, and and we must finish him no i i i don't subscribe to that because if that was then the idea i wouldn't be where i am mm, true mm. i said so many th- wrong things yeah yeah yeah, yeah and yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. people never gave up on me yeah. they always said to me um, um, you know Tokyo Swali once said to me uh, don't say we are going to kill uh, just say we are, go- we are not going to die without a fight mm. uh, but you are telling them we are going to kill mm. yeah mm. just, without just tell saying, yeah without mm. saying it just tell them we are not going to die without a fight mm. do you regret any yes. of the things that you've said or, or done i i don't regret anything i mean uh, we 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 are growing up yeah and therefore whatever we said uh, and when we look at it now on hindsight it's a it's a learning curve yes it's something that you you like mm we could have said it better mm. or differently mm. yeah but it ought to be said mm. yes so 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 we don't live life of regret and when you say you don't regret it doesn't mean you don't apologize yeah yeah where you are wrong you say i'm sorry mm. and then uh, even if i'm right the fact that you feel offended it's okay mm. yeah it just doesn't change the facts but mm. I'm sorry because the intention was not to offend you was to put the facts as they are. Mm. Yeah. So I put the fact I offend a lot of people because I put the facts the way they are. I sp- I, I swear a lot uh, informally to a point where 
uh, my communication team is always panicking. One day you're going to say this word on a, a media platform that I will never say it yeah. because I know time and space. Yeah, you can say it here. Uh, no, no, no. Which yeah. word is it? <laughs> is it fuck, <laughs> bitch? <laughs> They, no, I say them in Spadia. I don't oh. say in English. <laughs> <laughs> but to to Mara Spadia is Rogan. Spadia is Spadia. It's only the Kosa. The Kosa one yeah. is very, and very, very... And Zulu. And yeah. Zulu. Yeah. But what I was saying on the JJ Tavane interview yeah. is I was saying as young people, yeah. we don't engage in politics because we've seen and we are tired because nothing ever changes. It seems like these people, the guys that own and run this thing, politics, right, are so detached and, um, what's the word I'm looking for? So, so they're not in touch with reality, mm -hmm. unlike mm -hmm. yourself, you know. Mm -hmm. You are with the people. I mean, mm -hmm. your office, like I said, is right in the middle of the people. Mm -hmm. So you know what's happening in the ground. Mm -hmm. But the guys at the top don't give a damn and they don't even know what's going Out on. Out of touch. So as young people, what we are starting to do now mm -hmm. is just work amongst ourselves. That's why you see like a Likau start trip mm -hmm. without any mm -hmm. uh, uh, government funding. You see a podcast like this without any government funding. Because we've noticed we can't rely on them. All yeah. we can do is rely on each other and push. But what you are doing is politics. To the, the creation of an alternative media is in itself a political initiative. Okay. So you must never think that what you are doing is apolitical. Mm. If this thing grows to threaten the white media establishment, mm. the first thing they are going to do is to buy you out. Of course. Yeah. They are going to say, no, this thing is a problem. Yeah. And the day they want to buy you out, then you must know it's political. Mm. Yeah. They, because they control yes. the narrative. Yes, yes, yes. And therefore, they can't allow a person to have such a huge platform mm. without them deciding what goes into the content. Mm. So, uh, uh, when you say young people, uh, take it upon yourself. Do not rely on government. Yeah. It's political. Okay. You, you are correct to say, no, let's go and work. Uh, and that if this government is not... Uh, coming to the party, it will join the party late. Mm. But we're not going to uh, wait mm. in some closet uh, and wait for the government to say, now you can come out. Yes. No. You are going to work. Mm. And that's what politics demand of you. you let's go about this capsule and, and then like a writer of you. Hey, what's going to happen to us, the youth? Mm. 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 You need to wake up and work and show this government that it's possible. Mm. All I'm saying to you is that has government seen this platform? If the answer is yes, it must ask the question, how do we help these people? Yes. There are car washes mm. at uh, township. Mm. Has government ever asked, how do we regularize, formalize, and help these people? Every township has got a car wash. A <clears throat> professional mm. and look nice. No, we, we, they are waiting for you to go to government. But when they want you to vote, they don't say, come to us mm. so that we can tell you to vote for us. They come to you. Yeah. So we want a government that goes to the people, not only on elections. Mm. When you see a proper brain, like the United States mm. does, mm. once they see a talented genius, in the whole world, they give him that thing, but get green book. Mm, they, mm. they say, no, oh, you have a green book, you mm. can come here. And then when you arrive there, they incorporate you into the U.S. Army. Mm. Then you exercise that brain in the U.S. Army. That's how the U.S. Army managed to discover uh, the internet. Hmm. Because they, they identify the best brain and they pouch it. Mm. Yeah. So here, the best brain gets destroyed. Mm, no, mm, it's challenging government. Mm, it's challenging authority. Mm, mm. What type of government is this one which is scared to be challenged? This is a democratic society. The, the price of democracy is that the, the powers that be must be challenged. Mm. Yes. And what do you think about Ntlanta Lux? And the Dudula movement. Who's that? Who's Ntlanta Lux? You don't know Ntlanta Lux? Mm -mm. You've got to know Ntlanta Lux. Come on now. Yeah, it's a, <laughs> we try to say this one. Operation Dudula. It's a TV presenter. <laughs> What's that? Operation Dudula. 
<laughs> I know operation to do la. Yeah. The one that moves people. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, what do you think about that operation? Well, uh, it's self hate. Eh? Yeah, it's a self hate. Yeah. Mm. Black people are not loved all over the world. Mm. All over the world. You know, if you get into China, mm. a, a young child yeah. of a Chinese is yeah. going to come here and do this to you. Wow. Because she thinks you are dirty. <laughs> so she thinks. Hey. Yeah, that's, that's, that's us, black people. We are hated all over the world. And for another black person to hate another black person who is hated all over the world, what is that? Mm. What is that? I mean, let's show each other love. That's all I'm saying. Mm. Let's show, criminals, let's deal with I have no time for thugs. Mm. I don't tolerate thugs. I've got no time for thugs. But I'm not going to beat up a person because he's dark and ugly in my eyes. Mm. And, and, and then ask the person to tell me what, what is this in vendor. Mm. If you're to ask me what is this in spade, I don't know. Mm. So I, I must celebrate that. I must be part of that. I'm not going to do that. Mm. Borders for who? For what? Why? 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 why what makes you fall in love with these borders? Someone must just convince me because you are unemployed now yeah. with borders. <laughs> you are unemployed. You are suffering. You are poor now yeah. with borders. Yeah. What, what benefit does it come with these borders? And the borders have fallen, by the way. We look like crazy people because there is no fence. Mm. There is only gate. Gate without a fence. Mm. Those people in Lesotho, they just come across here during Sasa day to collect Sasa and go back. Mm. And then weekend they cross this side, one or two, when they are fine, they go back. There's no stamping of passport, nothing. Swaziland, Mozambique, Botswana, Botswana Zimbabwe. It's done. Society is ahead of us. We are backward. You come here and say, we want a decolonized education. And then you embrace borders that were imposed on us by the colonizers. Mm. We can't. You can't say, on the other hand, I hate colonialism. On the other hand, I support the borders. The borders is colonialism. Mm. Because the unity of Africa is a threat to the imperialists. Of course. They don't want us together. I'm not shaken by any Nigerian mm. or Zimbabwean or any black person. I've got my gift. I know what I'm capable <coughs> of. I know what I'm worth. Why should I be threatened by another black person? Mm. No. This uh, uh, America's economy is made by foreigners. Who's that uh, uh, Elon Musk? Elon Musk. Elon Musk. Mm. He's not an American. Mm. South Africa. Yes. Yeah. So, you love them when they have money. Mm. When they don't have money, they are not. You call them illegal. Mm. You call people of a, a Guiani illegal. Today, as we speak, someone was addressing Begi Kaila. They are saying in this police station there are too many Tonga speaking police mm. and vendors. Where, 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 where are we going to get? Uh, be careful what you are asking for. Be careful what you are asking for. Especially when I'm the dark one. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not great. You see, I, you see, Fuyani will survive. No, no, <laughs> no, 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 just look at that, this one. <laughs> Out. Uh, you wake up tomorrow, President of South Africa, what are we changing? We're taking the land. Yeah. We expropriate the land and we make the state a custodian of the land. Meaning the state owns the land. This office of the EFF is not going to be taken. All it has to do it has, must be defined that in this piece of land, there is an office called EFF office. Mm. It's being used to run political affairs of the EFF. Mm. Fine. And then here, what are you doing? Here, what are you doing? Mm. The rest of unutilized space must be utilized. Mm. Mm. Hey, why must you just be going around telling people, uh, in my book, I own uh, 5,000 hectares. How many hectares are you using? Mm. 10. Mm. When there are so many people without 
uh, land. In Mozambique, the land is owned by the state. Let me tell you, these whites who are saying you want to expropriate our land while living, they are not going far. They are going to Mozambique where the land is owned by the state. Mm. In China, the land is owned by the state. Hey, you love China, eh? Yeah. China is progressive. Ne? Yeah, it's an alternative to capitalism. Yeah. 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 So they make things happen, my man. How, how do you build two hospitals in two weeks? Hey, man. Mm. Oh, and then, yeah, if we say to you, just dig trenches. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> and they were once like us a few years back. <sighs> they were once like us, China. Those guys. They work and they've got, they don't have a 10-year plan. They've got 100 years plan. Mm. By this time, we must have achieved this. Mm. What is the plan of South Africa? Hey, man. Yeah? <laughs> what is the plan of South Africa? What do we want to achieve as we sit here? Except that we are waiting for a newspaper to advertise a tender. Only then we know, oh, they're going to do a tar road. No one knows when is this tar road going to be done. Yeah. Until it is advertised in a newspaper. When you see, we're not a nation. We're just people. Because a nation shares common vision and mission. What is that vision and mission that we share as South Africans, black and white? Mm. W w which mission is that? Ah, it's every so, man for himself, man. We, we, the Chinese have got a mission. Mm. You see? So, we need to make sure that we make this thing work. Mm. Yes. By owning, my brother, when they came here, just ask yourself one question, not too many questions. One, when they arrived, what did they take first? Mm. They took the land. They knew with the land, everything is done. Mm. Certain. They took the land. They were even prepared to commit wars of genocide. They actually, they committed them. Mm. Yeah. Wars in this country, the wars of resistance, when the Tosas were fighting them, it was over the land, mm, mm, mm. not over women or some uh, uh, mineral. No, we had not discovered diamond mm. and gold at that time. But, but like what we discovered was the land. Yeah. Yes. And they took it. Eh? Ah. Eh, hey, they took it, man. We don't have anything. We don't any, have anything. We 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 are tenants in our own country. You see there by waterfall. You yeah. see those houses there. Mm. You gotta lease it for ninety nine years. Yeah. No one owns those houses. It's yeah. crazy. Yes. Yeah. And and that uh, land he was given by yes. uh, 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 some white white mayor white, white mm. mayor or something. Yeah, it was like for uh, the role he played in the World War Two or something. He was like just walk there, whatever yeah. land you see, you can have. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> he didn't pay for that land. Yeah. No. <laughs> And it's Indian, by the way. Yeah, it's Indian, Indian family. Yeah. Indian yeah. family. It's yeah. an Indian family. You don't have anything, nothing. <laughs> and then uh, when you speak, someone says, no, let's fight each other. Yeah. You see? We can't fight each other. Black people must unite. And it's a unity of purpose. The unity of black people is a threat to all those who want to see us suffer. In the EFF, we don't spread hate, hate not even of white people. Mm. We spread love, that you must love yourself first, so that when you see another uh, black person, mm. you see yourself in that black person. Mm. You know, I grew up under Peter Mugaba. Peter discovered that Castle was paid almost a few months before he died, but they lived together throughout. Mm. And for some reason, he thought, ah, this guy was Shangan. Mm, mm. But tribe was nothing to them. Yes. They just saw black people, they saw comrades, mm. and that's it. Mm. So I have no problem whether you are Zulu or you are Tosa or anything. I blend everywhere where there are black people, mm. and I don't feel intimidated or scared. Mm. The drug dealers, the real drug dealers, they are known. Mm. And then you go and search some uh, old EFF former secretary and say he's selling drugs. Mm. Why? For what? For what? So we can't. Mm. We can't allow that. I'm, I, I would rather not get votes. Yeah. If I'm told that I must go and block a woman in Musina who's trying to jump a fence with a child because the child is sick and there's no medication 
in Zimbabwe. Oh. And they are jumping with that child so that they can get medication. Many of them don't even come here forever. They, they jump to get medication at the clinic in South Africa and jump back so that the child can be healed. Oh. In my right mind, with my wife and my kids in my life, I must see that woman and not see my wife carrying my own child oh. going to seek medication. If anything, I must reach for my pocket. Oh and help her to get the child the best medication. How did you meet your wife? She's beautiful, by the My way. My wife comes from the same section with me at Zone 1. You don't say someone's wife is beautiful. Oh, you don't? Yeah. Why not? It means who do my Okay, take that one out. Take that one out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, so you guys met there at Sishiko? Mm, oh, I was wow. a friend with the sister. Yes. Yeah, that's how I saw her. Oh, wow. Yeah. And now you got uh, two beautiful kids, no? Three. Or one? Three. Mm. How many boys, how many girls? Three boys. Three boys? Yeah. Which one do you think is going to take after you? The last one. The last one, eh? Mm. It reminds me of a young That I've got uh, the one of 15 years. Yeah. Mm. Is that another? No, no. In the three. Mm. I'm with my wife, I've got two. Mm. And this one I came with. Oh, but they, they all stay under one roof. You see, as the lambas, we don't allow that our children be all over. They must be under one roof, yeah. so that they learn the same things. Yeah. When so you your wife, yeah, if you are to marry a wife, um, and uh, you come with a child, she must love that child yes. if she loves you, yeah, because that's your blood. Yeah. And then their response is. No, their baby mamas are a problem. No, no, no. I agree. We're not saying love the baby mama. We say love this one. Yeah. And leave the baby mama. If she's crazy, let her be crazy. Hey. <laughs> but love this one. Yeah. Well, what, do, what do you do with the baby mama? Yeah. Hey, hey. Are you still in con communication with your uh, baby mama, the first Yeah, Yeah, we, we, we are all, all of us involved in the bringing up the boy. Yeah. Yeah, but the boy stays with me. Uh, and um, there are days where it drives me crazy and I'm like, I call the mother and say, you take over, otherwise I'll kill this thing. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so the mother must intervene and say, oh, wait, wait, wait. Then talk to her. I, I, don't, I don't believe in uh, those things of fighting. Yes. After we have had a relationship. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, 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 it's childish. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, you are human beings. When you reach a point where uh, the disagreements... Mm are so overwhelming, you must agree or it's not working. But when, when, when you make love to your wife, ne? Mm. must you call you CIC, Juju, Julius? What does she call you? Just leave it to the two of us. <laughs> <laughs> mm. well because, because, <laughs> because you see what you are doing. You are not different from boys who are peeping through windows when, <laughs> when people are busy. <laughs> Hey, Peduka, you got a question to ask him? Yeah, man. Do you ever see yourself like stepping down as the head of EFF? Because there's this idea that it's going to be a thing like the IFP or UDM where the founder is going to be there as the head forever. Well, the founder of uh, the July 26 movement, Fidel Castro, and later Communist Party, at some point, he stepped down. Mm. And in China the leaders of the Communist Party of China, they stepped down. So the IFP can never be an example to the EFF because its ideological orientation is not the same as that of the EFF. So in the EFF, there are elections held every five years. And then every five years when you are elected, mm. they, don't send, they don't say continuing president. They say newly elected mm. president. Mm. But I can't wait for the day where I hand over the baton to the younger generation. Mm. Mm. Because I've done this thing since I was nine years. Yo, yeah. hey. uh, I don't know any other life mm. except this. Yes. So when I say, if it was my wish, I will retire at 50, 55. Mm. Those who want to use their proximity to me to amass wealth. Hi, hi, where are you going? Where are you? I'm like, where am I going? Am I dying? I'm saying I'm retiring. So <laughs> you think if I'm not president, 
uh, you won't uh, get access to yeah. some of the things. That's why you say I must not retire. But we should retire. We've got a, an EFF student command who are investing in young people uh, who are at the universities, training them, because a success of a leader depends on whether he prepared the second and the third layer mm. of leadership. Mm. Yeah. In closing, uh, what do you want to be remembered as? I want to be remembered as a person who helped people, as a person who turned those who were called nothing into something. Yeah. So I want, uh, when I walk the streets or uh, uh, the malls, someone just come to me and say, I'm now a doctor. Wow. Or what do you mean? Mm. I know that registration you paid for me, mm. Uh, that uh, help you made for me to get into university. Mm -hmm. I made it, and I don't. I, I must not remember them. I don't help them to remember. Mm -hmm. I just know I helped a black person because uh, they don't owe me anything. Mm -hmm. They don't even have to vote for the EFF. I tell them all the time. Mm -hmm. But already, uh, I think I've achieved that because grown-ups, men and women, young and old come to me. The other one said to me the other day, hey, I'm sorry and so you remember me? I said, you know, as politicians, when we don't know a person, yeah. we just laugh. Ah, yeah. ah, is that you? Yeah. <laughs> I remember. And then, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then he says, no, I'm that one you rescued the house when the Standard Bank was repossessing hmm. the house. We even finished paying the bond mm. and you were still in the youth league. Mm. So I'm like, oh, I'm happy I could help. Oh. Yeah, you so. helped Fifi Kupane? Fifi Kupane? I did. Mm, yes. no, I, I did. I, did. I, 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 I like helping artists because they are underrated mm. in South Africa. Mm. And um, they are not um, um, uh, given special attention they deserve because without them, we will be a depressed nation. Of course. Yeah, their entertainment makes us to be who we are. Mm. Um, and, and they use their skills, you know, to, to comfort us mm. and, and uh, to revive the inner being and to give us hope that it's not all lost. Even when they themselves are not doing well, yes. they still give you that hope that uh, it's not all done uh, for as long as you are still alive. So they are not looked after. Yeah. Uh, so all the time in the EFF, we make sure that there is no activity of the EFF without artists and uh, they must be paid and you don't negotiate uh, a discount. Who are you listening to right now, music-wise? Who are you liking? Uh, but I'm not, in, I'm not into music. Is I don't it? like hey, those things of music. <laughs> they, are, they are a bit uh, uh, difficult for me. You know, I can drive from here to Pologuan without listening to music. What? Just, no, just thinking. Thinking, yeah. yeah alone. Mm, mm. Driving alone. Uh, thinking because I don't like things that are going to take me away from where I am. Mm. Yeah, well, I miss you. <laughs> <laughs> so piano, you haven't listened to piano? I do. Yeah, yeah, piano yeah. is my favorite. Piano, ne? Yeah, because uh, yo, Piano has fought uh, poverty. Yeah. Oh, big time. Yeah, big piano time. has changed lives of people yeah. in a big way. Massive. Yeah, in a big way. And then you, you ask yourself a question, what is the state's role? What mm. role did the state play? Zero. Nothing. Zero. You know, instead of opening studios mm. in each and every municipality mm. where people book, an hour to go and record mm. without paying anything mm. to harness and support mm. and this empower. talent. Mm. Look at what Piano is doing uh, worldwide, uh, mm. internationally. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, I was in Ibiza, those boys of Major League mm. were making things happen. Yeah. 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 Mm. So uh, you've got such a, a, a genre mm. that is your own. And we own it, yeah. And then you don't support it. But what I like about the youngsters now is that they own their music. Mm. 
there is no longer this business of robbing them. Mm. Of course, there will be there and there. It's life. Those mm. who get excited <laughs> and not look into the real contract. Mm. But majority of those artists that we celebrate today here at home, mm. they own their property. Yeah. And that helps because remember when you are an artist, you are loved when you are young. Mm. And when you are old, you are called a legend so that they don't book you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and unlike, unlike politicians, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> politicians, you are hated when, when you, you are, are young, young and you are loved when you are old. I mean, the ANC just appointed a 76-year-old man to be a chairperson of a lottery board. <laughs> 76 mm. in a in a country where young people are the most yeah. unemployed yeah. why they love them old mm. they have no confidence in young people so when you are youth now and you are in music mm. protect it so that it can take care of you mm. when you are older ne. yeah do you think uh, ANC will survive the next election it won't survive ne. no yeah the ANC is at 50.1 mm. it's ruling Gauteng at 50.1 they couldn't run their own conference it had to sit on two separate weekends which is a practical evidence of a serious crisis oh. so no miracle is going to happen between now and 2024 for the ANC to gain any support mm. in Houghton. they are ruling with extra one man oh. if he goes into hospital and then there is a motion of no confidence. Uh, you can remove these people. Oh, so that means you could become the future president. That's where we're going. Why are you asking obvious questions? <laughs> 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 thank you so much. CIC, yeah, thank yeah. you so much, yeah, yeah. man. I brought you this because uh, your story is very inspirational. It's kind of like yeah. ours, you know? Yeah. Uh, we, um, oh, yeah. This, this is my own gin. I don't know if you still oh, drink. Owning. Yeah, yeah, this is my own gin. This one. You are not like the rest of. No, no, no. I'm not just a face. No, 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 no. They own when they don't own. No, no, no. I did the recipe. I did everything. The packaging. I asked a, a guy who came, a friend of mine, who said he owns a gin. Mm. So I said to him, "Are they white people here?" He said, "No, I'm alone. This is mine." Where, where I, I was posing, said supporting. Then we opened a place there called Suit in Soweto. Yes. Then I call him, hey man, give me the number of George of uh, that place where they sell alcohol. I want to buy. Hey, hey, hey don't buy there. Don't buy there. <laughs> Why? That guy, I called him to ask him, how many bottles did he sell there? He's not telling me, hey, chief, you don't know how many bottles you sold to George. You. <laughs> Huh? Other you are the one, this is yours. Yes. You must know. Yes. He, you can't ask him. Yes. He says, No, you see, these whites, they are the ones who are actually eh. uh, selling eh. and then giving me reports. Now they don't. But you said you don't have whites. Yes. You are alone. Yes. So let me tell you, I'm going to buy by George because you're right. <laughs> I said you don't have whites when you had whites. <laughs> yeah. From the beginning, you should have explained. Yes, yes. I've got white people. It's not mine. Some percentage were talking about it, but otherwise, I'm the face. Yeah. So that we know it for what it is. Yeah. We don't no, 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 I'm not the face. Yeah. I'm hundred percent here. Because I've seen a lot of you guys here with Jean. Mm -hmm. What is the other one that you guys are doing? Wine? You're not playing in that space. No, not yet. Oh. Vodka. Vodka. This is yes. the president's gin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I will test it <laughs> when when I'm relaxed with my wife. Yes, yes. Yeah, and we'll if you want some more, together. yeah, you can get yeah. it macro. Is that macro? Yeah. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, this is proper stuff. Thank you so much, yeah. man. Congratulations. So, thank you. So yes. we're celebrating uh, nine years of the FF. Yeah, nine years. Nine of the years. Oh, oh, round of applause. Oh, oh, round of applause. Oh, round of applause. Nine oh, fucking years. Oh, oh. Yeah. So we are in uh, Bloemfontein. Yeah. Uh, on the ninth, and then. Next year, we're going to 1010. Wow. And then we're going to FNB Stadium. We've already booked it. Mm. Yeah, 10 wow. years of uh, the existence yeah. of the fearless movement. Yeah. And that is not in the pocket of white monopoly capital. Sure. The mm -hmm. only thing that black people can say they own after this. <laughs> <laughs> 
I love that, man. I was saying in closing, so his story is similar to ours, you yeah, know. Yeah. We're in the industry, we're outcasts, yeah. got kicked out, yeah. started yeah. our own thing. Yeah. Here we are pushing yeah, yeah, black yeah. excellence, Super. you know. Super. pushing love yeah, we don't have any white monopoly yeah. Yeah. no we're going to support you i think uh, you must be supported and thank you who was the lady you must talk to that lady who said no 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 it's not one lady it's a group of ladies yeah them where where are they yeah where are they yeah. <laughs> want to have a word where are they ladies and gentlemen this has been podcast and chill we are here Peace. Yeah. welcome to black excellence do not fear for if you do just sip on some grandeur and if you still do ask ourselves what would mapapunzi do parama chila itlesha lefiki ungo yi even if when they ask you how sabi in do not fear for if you do just say anestivi this is the medicine of censorship this is the pill which one is that one podcast and chill